Welcome to Friday, TGIF. It's the 22nd day of August, 2025. This podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, the pattern we've been talking about is setting up. The cold front coming in out of Canada, the subtropical moisture getting trapped in the Great Basin and the western areas of the divide, that's all coming together. So what will happen is temperatures are going to be well below average along and east of the divide with that moisture getting trapped west. So we're going to see quite kind of a interesting pattern here and it's going to be around for a little bit, really starting today. We saw the beginnings of it yesterday, but starting today through all the next week, the work week, it, it looks like this pattern is just going to hold. Too early for a Labor Day weekend forecast. And a lot of you folks are already thinking that. Who wouldn't? That next three-day weekend coming on up. We'll spend some time on that early next week as we've got some things to sort out. We kind of need to see what unfolds here over the next four to five days. Here's a great shot of that moisture increasing in the Great Basin yesterday. When you start to see layers, when you start to see clouds at kind of all the three levels, low, medium, and high, that's an indication of the atmosphere moistening up. And it is. And that's along and west of the divide. We saw this along and east of the divide yesterday with shower and thunderstorm activity beginning to pick up again. And this really was the case underneath that band of moisture we showed you on the satellite imagery yesterday. And there from northern Wyoming, some early morning Virga along the boundary of the cool front that rolled into northern Wyoming and southern Montana yesterday. And then we got thunderstorms presenting a nice rainbow in the Laramie area yesterday. Laramie got a little bit of needed rainfall. And the chances of showers and thunderstorms will be on the increase with this increasing moisture. Great shot of some rays there at a monument, Colorado, yesterday. And then we had a light show in southeastern Wyoming yesterday evening and last night with the arrival of the moisture, putting on a lot of frequent lightning with showers and thunderstorms in the area yesterday evening. And for some of you, this is going to be a, a common sight. When you get in this deeper moisture like this, the thunderstorms could really happen day or night. And then Rusty, another shot. We showed you some waves, some Hurricane Aaron yesterday and said, well, they probably have picked up. And well, here they are, pretty tumultuous along the Outer Banks again yesterday. However, Aaron now has really taken off. There's been a parade of planets and the moon. Some folks have been able to capture that, call that the parade of planets. If you're wondering what's going on up there, this is what you're seeing in the sky off to the east. Just a really good clustering of the moon, Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter putting on quite the show. Speaking of quite the show, that was yesterday morning in Sublette County, Wyoming near Pinedale. Beautiful double rainbow. Not often you get an early morning thunderstorm, but you'll get that when the moisture gets deep and rolls on in. And that is something that you are going to notice. Thunderstorms will be off to a little bit of an earlier start, getting started a little bit earlier in the day. This is why. We're looping this to show you what's going on in terms structurally. We've got that big low up there in South Central Canada. We've got another low up here in the Gulf of Alaska. And then we've got the moisture plume that has uh, developed and come on through. Now it does make the connection. You might be saying, oh no, it's going to get cut off. Don't worry. There's plenty of subtropical moisture that's going to be rotating underneath that high pressure ridge right here. And you can see the thunderstorms overnight and late yesterday over portions of western Arizona uh, heading up into the Las Vegas area this morning. So that moisture is there. That low is going to send that cold, at, that cold front down into the upper plains in the Midwest. There you can see it this morning on the 500 millibar analysis. We've got the two lows here, the low here, and the high wedged in between them. There's Aaron now rapidly moving out into the colder water of the North Atlantic where it will come to an end very quickly. Now this is today, this is Wednesday. Notice overall it's not that much of a different pattern. The high is still here. The low is still in the Gulf of Alaska, and that Canadian low has expanded and is really covering a lot of real estate. 
So look at these temperature anomalies. This is seven days added together. This starts from Saturday, goes to next Saturday. So Saturday, Saturday, a lot of the nation for the last week of August, which typically can be super hot. Well, it's going to be hot in the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada relative to average, but a nice cooling trend for you folks in the Corn Belt, whether you're in Chicago, Milwaukee, or Detroit, all the way back to Denver and Colorado Springs, and even down into Amarillo, and even down into Dallas. Dallas has only reached 100 degrees twice this summer. So this is going to end August on a rather cool note. Look at these high temperatures for the weekend. Now, these are the highs, the forecasted highs for Saturday. Look at this coolness. I mean, that's about as comfortable as you're going to get in August up here. The hot weather is trapped a little bit further south as the cool front is coming in. So this is Saturday's highs, Sunday's highs. Look at 60s. Those are high temperatures in August up there in eastern North Dakota and western Minnesota. Only 70 in Cheyenne, only 74 in Denver, only in the lower 70s in northern Wyoming, 70s in Montana. This is Monday, even cooler. Denver, a high of 68 on Monday. So that's about as cool as you're going to get it in the month of August. Notice where the heat is. It's getting trapped back here and down south as that cool front penetrating pretty far and pushing up against the divide. But even look at west of the divide. Look at these high temperatures for the western slope of Colorado back into Utah. That's pretty comfortable for August, and here's why. Let's loop the precipitable water again like we've been doing for you all week. And you can see, starting today and going through next Friday, it just hangs around. And you can see how prominent the cool, dry Canadian air is moving into the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes. So they're, they're not going to see any weather at all. They're just going to have some nice August temperatures and conditions and much lower humidity. And you can see at the last frame, even more cooler, drier Canadian air pours in to the central and eastern United States. While if you notice back here, we're just consistently in the green, the white, and the blue, even back into California, even up into Washington and Oregon, you're going to see some shower and thunderstorm activity. This is the risk of thunderstorms today. The darker gray sh shaded green here, even back into Arizona, you're going to see a few stronger thunderstorms in this mix today. So keep that in mind. So thunderstorms will be most widespread here by, this is between noon and 6 p.m. mountain time today. Showers and thunderstorms along the front boundary, you're going to see a few strong ones. Tomorrow, kind of more of a general thunderstorm pattern. Look at the thunderstorms getting back into here, into the Sierras, into southeast and south central Oregon, back into the Great Basin, back into Salt Lake. More showers and thunderstorms for Arizona and the Four Corners region. That's where they're going to be tomorrow. Notice where the cool, dry Canadian air is. There's a little bit of a, a boundary of where the thunderstorms are going on to be. Now, it doesn't mean it won't rain along that black line. It may vary well. It's just going to be more in the form of rain showers. And then thunderstorm activity kind of expands on a west to east axis and starts to lift a little bit more north. But the west to east axis basically stays in the same place all weekend, kind of in that oval there maybe a little bit further north. So that's where the thunderstorm action is going to be this weekend. And to keep consistency of what we've been showing you all week, the 15-day cumulative prediction of precipitation looks the same. Even into the deserts of California here, there's the Sierra Nevada. You're going to see some showers and thunderstorms. And then you can see Colorado. You can see the darker, brighter colors where the more consistent showers and thunderstorms are going to be. But Pretty much everybody's going to be getting into some action over a two-week period in the region. The AI still sees it and is also, this is the GFS rather, adding a slide. The GFS model is in agreement that the same basic areas are going to have a good chance of precipitation. The AI is still seeing a tropical wave wanting to increase thunderstorm activity late next week down here. Not convinced that's going to happen, but we're going to watch it. Stay tuned on Monday. Because that, this is why I'm a little hesitant on your Labor Day weekend forecast because of this feature right here. But you can see it's the same basic story being told over a two-week period. And then when you see the agreement like this in the modeling, especially if the deterministic models and the AI tools are singing the same tune, your confidence level goes up. So 
We'll keep our fingers crossed, and I've been telling you, it's not a one-day situation. This is averaged out over a five- to seven-day period to where cumulative, hopefully, these areas that really need it west of the divide and the dry areas that need it will be able to get something. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.